Well, it's definitely been one of them weeks this week. If you've been following the channel, you'll know that we had a bit of a problem when we recently went to Mablethorpe. We thought we'd just take a day out and have a nice walk round. Unfortunately, one mile outside of Mablethorpe, the car broke down. And I did get in touch with RAC. Unfortunately, they did not have the part to repair it. So we had to get towed home. And that left me in a bit of a dilemma. Because in this area, there's only a couple of garages. And after ringing those garages up and asking for a quote, based on what the RAC man told me, as he suspected it was the ignition coil, they said you're looking at something in the region of £160 plus VAT, which is quite a big chunk of money. So I thought, what if I could not only get that part cheaper, but I could also fix it myself? I did do quite a bit of research on this, but there's one thing that stood out amongst everything else, and that was YouTube itself. I'm not a mechanic, I haven't got a clue how to repair cars, but I do have a clue on maybe how to save a bit of money, and that is based on just trying, which is something that we all need to do in every situation, rather than saying, I don't think I can do it, I'll just pay that try it yourself and YouTube is the best place to go for information it's absolutely amazing what you can find on there to help you out we recently fixed a dripping tap but I'm not a plumber but I found a step-by-step -step video that showed me exactly how to repair that tap and it worked and it only cost me 36p so based on that alone I thought well maybe there's some videos on YouTube that will show me how to repair that car for a lot less than the asking price at a garage. As it turned out, there was a video on there. So I watched this video a couple of times and then thought all I need to do now is source that part and just buy it myself. As it turns out, there's two different versions of this part. One is quite expensive. It's a hundred pound plus VAT. But then there's another one that you can get for around 40 odd pound plus VAT. They're the exact same part, they're just made by a different company. So I thought, because I'm not 100% sure that it is that that's at fault, we'll buy the cheap version and then I'll follow along with this YouTube video and see if I can take this thing apart and put the new bit back on. And it took me around 30 minutes, but I was taking my time, removing the top part off the engine that I needed so I could gain access to that coil and then slowly going through the different stages, nipping in and out at Caravan, just to keep updated in what I was doing. And as it turned out, it wasn't difficult at all, thanks to the advice from that YouTube video. So I got it all put back together. I started the car up and it run perfect. I took it for a two mile drive and back and it never missed a beat. And originally when this problem occurred, it was misfiring on cylinders three and four. So that part fixed that problem for us. But more importantly, the part I bought plus the VAT cost me 57 pound. So that was a massive saving. And I also got the satisfaction of the fact that I did it myself. So I would say to anybody, no matter what the problem is, always try and have a go at fixing it yourself. If it's not something obviously that's dangerous. And I think you'd be surprised at what you can actually achieve just by looking at a video on YouTube. And that's what YouTube channels are about. That's what this channel is about. How we're managing in a caravan after being evicted from his house. It wasn't a thing that we chose. As followers of this channel will know, we was given a section 21 eviction order and told we've got eight weeks to leave because the landlord was selling. And that puts you in a very scary situation, especially when you can't get any help from council on top of that. So to go over that once again, because people keep asking me, and I don't think they've probably seen the previous videos, we cashed in a pension and we used that money to buy this van. Because if we hadn't have done that, we would have been homeless by now. So that was the only option that we had. And to be perfectly honest with you, I've not looked back since. We like the caravan, there's plenty of space in it. 
we can grow plants outside there, it's not a problem. The site fees are very reasonable. So we bought the van, we paid the site fees, and that's sort of set up for a year, apart from gas and electricity, which is actually working out not too bad. I did take another look at the gas, and it's still not empty. And the last time we looked at that, I said there was probably around a third left in it, and we'd been running it for around 49 days. And when I calculated the cost of the gas canister, divided by the days that we'd been using it, it was working out at £1.77 a day, which I didn't think were that bad anyway. But that was quite a while ago, and that gas canister hasn't run out yet. So it's been going since the 5th of May, which is over 60 days. So I did recalculate that, and now it's working out to £1.41 a day, which is even better. We haven't got an electric bill yet, by the way. And I have been asked about that quite recently. I'm not 100% sure when they send the bills out, but I do know it's only once every six months. So we'll just have to wait until it arrives and I'll obviously go over that for everybody. And then we can see if electricity charges are similar to an house or cheaper. We're really not expecting cheaper, but if they even out, we're happy at that. So currently gas is still running away quite happily. We're down to 141 a day on gas usage now. And I've repaired that car for just over £50. Just by doing a little bit of research on YouTube. And the whole idea about me doing these videos at the moment is because I was thrown into this situation. And I thought, well, why not document it from day one? Because we've never been in this situation before. And we can see how it goes and just make a series of videos out of it so that if anybody else finds themselves in a similar situation or wanting to purchase a static caravan on the site or off site, we can at least offer people information that's going to help them out during that process. Just like the guy helped me repair the car. So we're just going to carry on doing these videos about anything that we can think of that's relevant. And I do keep getting asked where exactly this site is and I'm afraid to say that that is something I'm not willing to disclose. It's a small site in Lincolnshire and I think that's enough information and maybe the person who was asking was asking because they're very interested in maybe being on this site as well but we found this site by chance but we did research and as I've always said stay away from the big sites they'll charge a lot of money and their rules are completely different to small sites like this so if you do your research I'm sure that you'll find something quite suitable and I have had a few messages from people as well telling me about the sites that they're on and their sites are even cheaper than this and they're open 12 months a year so it just goes to show that it's not particularly just this site there is others out there you just need to have a look, find what suits you. Meanwhile, we've been taking the vents down in this caravan. They've gone a bit of a yellow colour, so they just don't look nice. So we searched online for these vent covers. I'll show you what sort I'm talking about. It's that one there. And in this caravan, they're all exactly the same. But you can see it's got a little bit dirty and it's discoloured as well. So since we're now in this van, we're doing everything we can to make it as nice as possible. We've just started redecorating the shower room as well. We want everything to have a new feel to it because this is our new place, at least for now anyway. And we're going to be spending a lot of time in this caravan. Obviously, we're going to be spending time away because it's non-residential. But we'll be spending quite a lot of time, especially through summer. So obviously, you need to make it really nice and clean and tidy just the way you want which is why we've been getting rid of various pieces of furniture that was here when we got in this van and exchanging them for things that better suited us and that is just another little part of it i look at the vents every day and i just want to take them all down and throw them away and get brand new ones but i have searched online and i can't find any of that particular size and i have searched on ebay and i've searched on amazon i just cannot find one so what we're going to do is we're going to take them down, we're going to give them a really deep clean and then we're just going to repaint them so they look nice and fresh and then we pop them all back up, that job's done and once again we've saved a bit of money. And that's what it is all about when you're in a van, you don't know what winter's going to bring, you don't know what all those bills are going to be. 
because in my case we've never done it before so the more money that we can save through summer is really going to help us out in autumn and winter which is why I'm doing the things that I'm doing at the moment like watching videos until it sinks in and I can repair things for a quarter of cost and I'll just keep doing that as much as I can because with the economy being like it is and at the moment showing no signs of improving we need to look out for ourselves we can't rely on handouts we can't rely on government we can't rely on councils we can't rely on benefits pensions are also getting a little bit dodgy at the moment and we don't know in what direction things are going to be going over the next few years so I say at the moment do as much as you can save as much as you can and at least then you've got something there if you ever need it I also had a comment from Michael quite recently saying that he watched the Skegness video because we are doing a, a few trips out now and again and he said he couldn't watch the video he had to turn it off at some point because the camera was bouncing around and I perfectly understand what you're saying Michael I really do but because we're in this position and we've been evicted from his house we're really trying to cling on to those pennies because we don't know what the future is going to bring so to shell out big chunks of money on things like a gimbal which I believe is a a phone stabiliser so when you're walking it doesn't bounce around as much at least I assume that's what they are we don't really want to be putting anywhere between 150 and 300 pound into one of those so what I'll do in future is I'll not film kind of walking around I can just do the tripod and point at things if that helps people because it's very difficult to walk and keep a camera stable but I am definitely working towards getting one of those to improve the quality of those outdoor videos as much as possible I did get my microphone come because sometimes we get a lot of wind noise so I bought a wireless microphone unfortunately after waiting quite a few weeks for it to come it's the wrong one it's for an iPhone and it doesn't fit into my phone so that was a bit of a waste of time so I'll research that again and I'll try and get hold of a better quality one so we can also keep the quality of the sound as good as possible but we are working at the moment on a shoestring I've got a £10 tripod which I use for making this videos and it's the same one that I carry around when I'm outside we've not really invested a lot of money into equipment because we're simply not in a position to do that as we move forward I'm hoping we will be able to but I don't take anything as a criticism on what I'm doing it's just pointing things out I was told quite a long time ago when I was doing the gardening channel that the intro was too loud and they said is there any chance you can reduce the volume of that intro and then maybe you'll get a few more views and I do understand when it comes to YouTube videos the first 30 seconds of any video is what captivates anyone so if it blasts in your ears like the tractors did quite recently and once again I'm sorry about that I didn't realise how loud those tractors were at the end that's kind of off-putting to people because straight away it's too full on so I reduced the volume of that intro and after that all was fine so I'm not opposed to people offering up comments which they may think sounds like criticism but it doesn't to me it's basically just pointing out something to me to improve these videos that maybe I'm overlooking so I do appreciate your feedback Michael and I didn't take it in a negative way whatsoever so we're still trying to keep as busy as we can because we want everything done in this caravan before autumn creeps in so everything is going to get a bit of a touch up we've done that decorating in that bathroom and we're going to do a few more bits and bobs in there and then I'll show you what it looks like after I have also got a picture of what it looked like before so we can compare it and then maybe a bit of work in here definitely these vents behind me but we've also got to make sure we get the ones that's got the mesh on the back of them because come autumn and winter we do not want all those creepy crawlies working their way through those vents and I'm not sure if all these vents do have that mesh on the back but I'll definitely make sure that if these haven't gotten we'll make our own we could probably just use some spare netting that we've got 
because we have just bought all brand new netting all the way around this van and in the other rooms as well and I'm quite sure there's a bit left so we can also cut some little pieces from that and maybe glue it onto the backs of those vents if they don't have that on there already but if they have got it on and it's a bit dirty we can always cut that way and replace it with some fresh and once again it's not going to cost us anything so just little jobs like that are really important to us to get done it's already been brand new carpeted and laminate floored all the way through this van so that's one thing that we don't have to do we've bought ourselves a new settee we've fitted a brand new toilet in there because it did have a slight leak we've bought ourselves a new bed a divan one with drawers in the bottom because that really helps us out with storage so we're just going to keep chipping away at all these little jobs as we go through summer and then hopefully by autumn and winter we'll be fully set up and we don't know what that's going to bring because this again is our first time hopefully we're going to get through the best part of that as comfortable as possible anyway thank you so much for everybody that's on board this channel and I do really appreciate your comments, your suggestions, because we've had some really good ones over the last few videos. People really helping us out with the best way to eat caravans through autumn and winter, the cheapest way to do this and do that. There really has been so much useful information. So please keep that up because I really do appreciate it. And if you want to see what videos we're going to be making in the future and places we're going to go, then please hit that subscribe button, press that notifications bell, and I look forward to seeing you then. Enjoy your weekend. Take care.